It's Living Young Country Girl, and I am going to be sharing with you guys some travel tips to help you be ready to travel. Now, um, I know a lot of you guys that are maybe new to my channel or have only been around for a while may think, well, she doesn't really travel much. Why is she giving me travel tips? I do travel a lot, and it's more than just to dis just Disneyland. I do share a lot of our Disneyland trips with you guys, but prior to having kids, my husband and I traveled for the first nine years of our marriage. Um, we backpacked through Europe. We camped all in these different places. Um, we did Hong Kong about every few months. We went to China, Hong Kong, um, South America, Canada. So we've done quite an extensive amount of traveling between the two of us um, as well as together. And so I wanted to share um, some of my tips and some of the things that, you know, come up when you're getting ready to travel. And they're things that as we're getting ready for our first international trip with our kids that I'm kind of starting to remember. And I wanted to share them with you guys in case you guys have any travel plans coming up. So I'm going to get started here. And like I said, these are kind of just basic tips in general. So I hope they help you guys out if you guys are going to be starting your travels or traveling anywhere soon. The first tip is to wear comfy shoes. Now, I know that may sound completely ridiculous, like obviously you're going, duh, but just keep in mind that you're going to be walking a lot more than you normally do. On a normal day, I can wear flip-flops all day and not have a problem. It's fine. But obviously, if I'm traveling, I'm going to be walking a lot more than I would on a normal day. And so wearing comfortable shoes is important. And along that same line, make sure that they're comfortable shoes. Like think about if you're going to be in an environment that's wet, if you're going to be somewhere where it's raining a lot, maybe sneakers that are thicker might not be such a good idea. So kind of think about what the weather is going to be like, what kind of um physical activities you're going to be like and make sure that you find a comfortable pair of shoes that will meet those criterias for that area as well as something that you've worn for a while to make sure they are comfortable they're not new that there's not going to be any spots where they rub I also recommend making sure that you find a brand or a style of sock that you enjoy wearing with those shoes because you don't want to try a new sock or buy new socks thinking, oh, I'll have nice new socks because they might be a little thicker. They might have a seam where you don't know. So just make sure that when you are talking about your feet and what you're putting on your feet, that you make sure you've tried them out and that you know they're going to work and that they'll work for not only just what activities you're going to be doing, but also for the climate that you'll be in. So that's my number one tip is your footwear. Be sure they're comfortable and be sure they're practical. Maybe you are going out some evening or you might be walking a little bit more. So you might want to, you know, wear something a little more dressy or something fancy at that time. But again, keep in mind, like in Europe, you don't have elevators. You usually hike upstairs um, and it's not always level streets. A lot of them are cobble streets. So wearing something with heels may not be a practical option. Um, even if you're used to wearing them here, it's different over there. So just keep some of those things in mind. Number two is going to be um, don't overpack. And that kind of goes along with your shoes because as women, I know we like to have different shoes for different outfits, but that can cause a lot of overpacking. And so keep in mind to limit what you really need, not necessarily what you want, especially if you're traveling um, to areas where you're not going to have the luxury of just getting off a plane and going to a hotel and sitting in a hotel, okay? If you have to ride subways or trains or do all these things, you're going to be going up and down a lot of stairs. Um, even if it requires a couple transfers, you're going to get off one, you're going to go downstairs, you're going to have to go under, you're going to have to hike up back stairs to get to the other line that you need. And this takes a lot of energy, so especially if you have a case that's heavy or you because you overpacked you're going to be regretting it so keep that in mind and make sure that you don't overpack that you pack adequately for your trip there's always places to do laundry you don't have to worry if you run out of something um, you can usually do laundry worst case scenario you can we when we were in Europe we washed ours hand washed them in the sink we just brought along some laundry soap and we'd hand wash them in the sink if we knew we were going to be staying a couple days and it would have a time to dry you can pack those really easy compact um shower hangers, you know, or clothes hanger rods or reels. There's all kinds of things that you can do to do your laundry. So even if you don't necessarily have access to a laundry facility, which we did, but there were a couple times where we didn't, um, that you can actually hand wash it by just packing a little thing of laundry soap and a little retractable clothesline. So 
don't overpack. Keep in mind, you know, that you can wash things during a trip, especially if you're going on three weeks trips, you're not gonna be able to pack three weeks of clothes. So just keep that in mind. Um, generally speaking, we like to wear a lot of darker clothes just because if you have to wear it twice before it gets washed, you're probably not going to see dirt and stuff on there. We use a lot of essential oils, which are great for covering up some of those smells. So you can actually get away with an extra day as well if you need to. Um, and things like undergarments, they usually dry pretty quick. So you can wash those, you know, more frequently. Uh, the next thing is don't forget um, your power cords. Now, when we did most of our traveling, I do have to say it was prior to everybody having a cell phone. Like it was a, it was more of a luxury thing. So we didn't have to necessarily worry about power cords for our phone. And also because we were international, we weren't taking our phones with us. International plans were exuberant back then. So um, we, they still are overpriced, but we didn't end up um, taking our phones with us. But even having like extra batteries, extra chargers for your cameras, making sure that when you pack all of those cords that you don't forget them at the hotel or at the location you're at that's a really common mistake um, also making sure that they're adaptable like if you need an adapter to be able to plug them in and use them that's super important too and nowadays with your phone you pretty much always need an extra power bank if, especially if you're going to be using it um, if you have like Wi-Fi and you're using it with Google Maps or you know you're just using it to take pictures or videos having an extra power bank battery is always a great idea so don't forget your power cords or how you're going to use or charge whatever it is you're using, whether it's your phone or your camera or whatever it is. All right, so the next one is don't over schedule. So something that we like to do when we take vacations is we like to try to leave some open time, some free time to make sure that we're not so booked up that we miss out. Okay. So by that, I mean like our next trip that we're taking, we actually are going to be there for 10 days and we have planned three days to be at Disney um, and two days to be just exploring Tokyo. Now the last three days, we have nothing planned on there. We didn't buy tickets. We didn't do anything. We're going to actually leave that open to see what we want to do. We might find that we want more time to explore Tokyo. Maybe we want to go and do one of the day trips to see something outside of Tokyo. We might want to go back to Disney. I I can't say until we get there. So we like to leave a lot of open space and open time in our traveling. When my husband and I used to travel, we didn't do anything. We didn't make hotel reservations. We had basically a train and um, car reservations. That was it. So we knew how we were getting from place to place. But once we got there, it was just open to what we wanted to do. There was one time we drove all the way down to Marcel and realized we didn't like it and drove all the way back. So it was two days of traveling and driving. But you know what? Even though we didn't necessarily plan it and it didn't work out the way we wanted, we got to see some amazing, amazing countryside as we were driving. So be open to having a schedule that's not super set so that way you can kind of experience some things and have a chance to kind of maybe change things up a little bit without having to feel like you have everything so booked you can't do that. So the next thing is going to be um, wear a watch, okay? So don't just rely on your phone for time, partly because sometimes your hands might be full and you might not be able to pull your phone out to check the time. Um, at the same time, if you're looking for flights and, you know, trying to make time, you know, make trains and stick to a schedule in the sense for traveling or whatever it may be, you have a show or something you're doing. You don't not want to necessarily be constantly pulling your phone out. Sometimes you can be in a crowded area and you might not even be able to get to it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend leaving it in your pocket. So if it's in your bag, that makes it a lot harder to get to. So wear a watch and make sure that you're changing your watch once you get on the plane to the time zone of where you're going to be. Normally, the pilot will come on and tell you what time it is and where you're going to be at that time. And so you can go ahead and switch it to it um, and that way your mind starts kind of setting it into what time it is. And that also helps you for just adjusting with jet lag and stuff. So I suggest like I have my Fitbit, so I'll have my Fitbit. But then that also means I got to remember a plug for this or to recharge it. But even if you don't have that, just some kind of watch so you don't have to necessarily be pulling out your phone and you're relying on your phone for a time. Because sometimes if you don't have service, you don't have Wi-Fi, it might not be updating either. So Definitely wear a watch so you can keep track of time. Like I said, most of us nowadays don't wear one. So it's a good idea to think about that before we go. Because, I mean, obviously you could probably buy a watch somewhere, but maybe you don't want 
to spend your money on a watch. I mean, there's other things you want to buy. So wear a watch so you can keep track of time without necessarily relying on your phone. Um, talking about phones, it, the next one kind of comes into play with phone plans. Have you looked at what it will cost to use your phone in the countries you're going to? Does your provider even provide service there? And if they do, what are the rates that you're looking at? Nowadays, phone providers provide coverage pretty much everywhere, but you might not necessarily want to be paying to be using your phone like you would here. Um, I know for us, I was looking at for our trip, it would be like five cents for every um, incoming message, like text message, and 20 cents for every outgoing text message. That can add up really quick if you're communicating. I know I, I get uh, messages from different, you know, things like my young living will send me a message or, you know, just different messages come through. And those are things I don't want to be paying five cents to check out. So I want to make sure that I have looked at my phone plan and I know what will happen. I'm going to be turning off roaming because we are actually not going to have phone service, but we are going to do Wi-Fi. So everything we need to do, we can actually do on Wi-Fi. So we're just going to rent a little Wi-Fi thing at once we get to the airport. And that way I can use my phone. My husband can use his phone on Wi-Fi and we have Messenger with Facebook and we can actually call and communicate with Messenger because that uses Wi-Fi versus actual phone. So look at the plan, see what's best, um, do your research and find out what is going to be best for you if a phone option, you know, maybe a phone plan is fine or if doing something like renting a Wi-Fi or if you have a phone that's unlocked, you can switch SIM cards. Um, these are all options that you want to research before you go so you know how you can communicate with others. And because we have our animals and our house sitter and everything, um, I wanted to be able to communicate with them. And so I said, you know, let's make sure that you have Messenger installed. So that's going to be how you're going to have to communicate and, you know, contact me if there's any issues. So just make sure you've put those things into place before you go so it's not something you have to worry about when you get there. The next one is um, to watch your budget. It's really easy to be traveling and just kind of like forget about the budget, especially when sometimes there's like the exchange rate. Sometimes we kind of lose track of what we're spending. Um, and this can be really hard too for somebody who maybe likes to go out and, you know, party and drink or do nice dinners or whatever. You want to watch your budget and make sure that you're staying within it because those things can add up really quick. Sometimes you don't realize um, about this kind of falls in that same thing. Um, like cover charges or minimums and stuff like that. Cause sometimes when you're in a foreign country, you might not realize some of the extra things or the hidden fees and stuff, um, or they might just be taking advantage of you. So definitely watch your budget and make sure that you know that. Um, this next one kind of goes along with that as far as tipping. Tipping is very different in different countries. So you kind of want to keep in mind um, and do again your research and see what tipping is customary in that country. Um, from what I've read in Japan, tipping is not customary. They actually won't accept it. They have people run you down and like give it back to you. It's not something they do. However, if you look on their bill, generally tipping in some of the nicer, you know, restaurants where you're you feel like you really should be tipping is already included in the bill. So make sure that you look at your bill and see if there has already been a tip included and see what's customary for that place that you're visiting because you don't want to be insulting to them, um, but you also don't want to be rude. So I think as, a, as Americans, generally we are like when other people come travel over here, having worked in a restaurant and, and service um, industry, I realize that people coming from other countries didn't always tip and it wasn't that they were being rude or insulting. It was just, they didn't realize it. So make sure that you learn the customs of where you're going and what is customary as far as tipping goes in those areas. Um, the next one is going to be, um, making connections, um, this kind of has to do more with flying and traveling on airplanes. So if you're traveling, I was watching a video the other day and nowadays some airlines are very strict about the you need to be there an hour before departure. Like that's just you have to be there. If it's any less, they're not going to let you on. Our general rule of thumb for us traveling is two hours um, ahead of time. You want to be there two hours ahead of time because you don't know what security is going to be like. You don't know what on that's going to be like. So we always recommend if you're traveling domestically two hours ahead of time, internationally three hours ahead of time. 
Nowadays, once you get past security, they have so many great things for you to be able to do. If you are a frequent flyer, you might have access to one of the airline lounges, which are amazing. Or, you know, there's obviously going to be a Starbucks, a coffee shop. Um, there's places to eat. I know on this next trip, because of the way our time and our flight goes to get there early we're going to actually purposefully not eat breakfast because we're going to go we're going to check in and then we're going to have breakfast when we're in the airport and it doesn't have to be expensive again guys you can keep it on a budget it doesn't have to be super expensive they have mcdonald's they have cheap things they also have you know nicer restaurants so just kind of do that we can even pack a breakfast and just eat it there instead of buying it you know but i mean like that way we use up some of that time that we're waiting and worst case scenario if we do have to wait three hours because of, you know, or we use all that cushion that we got there ahead of time, we will be able to eat on the plane. So it's not a big deal either way, but um, definitely make sure that when you're doing that, and that kind of goes for connecting flights too. If you are um, doing a domestic one, you want to have a, an hour in between. We're cutting ours short. We only have like 55 minutes in San Francisco um, to get from one to the other. So that's cutting it short. But at the same time, um, I'm going to make sure when we arrive at the airport and check in at LAX that we let them know that we will be um, transferring up in San Francisco and try to get seats in the front of the plane. And because we're coming three hours early, I know people can book. We're going to book. We're going to go online and try to get our seats and stuff. But I know, you know, being there early, we should hopefully have the option to get in those seats towards the front of the plane to get us off to give us more time. So keep all of those things in mind, you know, think about traveling, think about getting off, thinking about connections, being at the front of the plane versus the back of the plane. If you do have a tighter connection can say, you know, give you 15 minutes, you know, I mean, it can take 15 minutes longer to get off at the back of the plane than it does the front of the plane. So keep all of those things in mind when you're thinking about your connections and your flights and stuff. Um, the next thing is once you arrive at your destination, have you, how are you going to get from the airport to the hotel? Now, this is something that I literally just realized the other day. We had some airfare stuff go on with our airfare and change of the airline change stuff. And I'll talk more about that in the video when we come back and talk about our whole planning trip. Um, but we end up having to change our flights. And I just realized recently that we are no longer flying into the airport port I thought we were flying into, which is a smaller, newer airport, we are flying into the further, more expensive airports. So you're looking at a lot more of, um, it's going to take, it's going to cost more for us to get into town, which I didn't realize we are saving money as far as like the airfare was like a hundred bucks cheaper, but it might end up totally being a wash because we might end up and actually flying in there. So Anyways, that being said, we, I have to go back and start researching because I had already researched how, what it was going to cost the best, you know, way to get from the airport to our hotel from the original airport. Now I have to go back and look from this other airport. And I guess they're fairly close to each other, but it sounds like in Tokyo, like five miles takes like an hour difference. Like it's because of congestion and stuff. So that's going to be a difference, you know, in how we get there. Um, so you want to research that. I've heard taxis are exuberant over there. So don't do it. We used to take a taxi in Hong Kong all the time. We were there so much that I literally knew how to get from place to place. So even if we were in a taxi, I'd be like, excuse me, why are we going around this way when you could have just gone down this way? He's like, oh, traffic, traffic, traffic. I'm like, really traffic? Normally it costs us this much. And that's what I'm planning on paying, you know, for this trip. So I was able to, and of course he pretended he didn't speak English, but all of a sudden he went back the way that I was saying he should be going. So obviously that helps when you travel someplace a lot. You you start to know the places. Um, I'm very thankful that I am good with directions. And literally, even like when we went to um, to France the second time we went, I was like, oh, this, okay, we just need to go here and here and here. And my husband's like, you know where we are? And I'm like, oh, because last time, you know, he was like, I have no clue where I am. So it's nice and helpful because I generally have a pretty good sense of direction and can get us places pretty quickly. So, you know, that helps. But if you, if it doesn't help, make sure you talk to somebody, ask somebody at the airport, I was going to take a taxi, you know, to whatever, do you know how much that would cost? You know, and they should be able to tell you like the guest service people should be able to tell you. Um, or if you're at a hotel, your concierge or, you know, the customer service people should be able to tell you, um, the best way, the cheapest way, or if you are taking a taxi, how much it should cost. Um, and that's something too, you can always negotiate before you get in the taxi, be like, I want to go here. Um, you know, what would the fare be and ask them. You can do those things ahead of time, but just keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on the meters. Make sure they're not like going in circles and stuff. Um, 
So, I, and like I said, that can be hard when you're in a country you don't know, you don't know how to get somewhere. So sometimes taking something like a bus can be the difference between paying 20 bucks and paying a dollar. So, you know, don't be afraid to try some of the different transportations um, and not just stick with a taxi because a lot of times those are the most expensive and that's, they usually like to rip off tourists. So do some research, figure out how you're going to get from the, ho from the airport to the hotel or wherever your destination is. Okay, the next thing is um, to notify your bank that you are leaving. Now, we have done that in the past, and it didn't matter. They still paused, froze our card, and we were like, really? And we had to call them and work it all out. However, um, <clears throat> on this particular trip, we were, and we had done it before, but we were buying some pretty expensive items. And so I think that's what kind of triggered it was they weren't expecting us to be spending $10,000 over there. So they were like, okay, wait a minute, what's going on? Um, so you do, but we had notified them ahead of time, but they still froze our cards. But it's a good idea to contact your banks and let them know that you will be traveling to these countries on these dates just so that, you know, they don't freeze your card because it was hard um, because it was somebody we knew. We were able to use their phone and call our bank and get it all straightened out. But if it was in a different situation, it could have been a lot you know, harder and more complicated. So because even with that, we knew them, but their language barrier was still hard and translation was still you know a little bit lost there but make sure you let your bank know that you will be traveling so they know these things um and then along the same line is to we for us generally speaking we use an atm when we arrive at the airport to get cash out we don't do any exchanging ahead of time banks generally and this is just kind of a general rule so don't it's not always the case but generally speaking a bank's going to get because they're exchanging larger amounts they're going to get a better rate than you can get anywhere else so for us going to um an atm when we arrived at the airport and withdrawing our max amount was what we would do and then on the next day um and we would always split it up so I, like half of our money was in my account half of the money was in my husband's account so if they did freeze an account we usually had still an account available and that also gave us the double the amount we could take out for the day. So, you know, splitting up your money into two accounts can kind of be a great way to do that. However, you got to remember, too, you're going to have a transaction fee for each one of these. And that's why we generally would take out the max amount. Um, we are the money belt people. We wear our money belts and hide our money and put them in different locations. You don't keep it all in one spot, you know. So that's kind of something that we do, too. And the limits that they allow are not like... I mean, most of the time it's like 500 bucks. So it's a lot of money, but it's not astronomical. But 500 bucks for us would last two or three days. So then we would go withdraw again. And most convenience stores will have an ATM now. And again, like I said, you don't want to be doing it every day. But if you can withdraw the max amount, you know, a few times throughout your trip, those like fees that you're going to get generally aren't that bad compared to the rate that you're getting because your rate's going to be better. So We've always done it that way. Um, that may not be the best way for all countries and all places, but in general, when we've traveled, that has been a great way to get our money and to do that. Um, something though you might want to consider, you want to remember is ATMs are usually going to give you larger bills. And if you're going to smaller mom pop places or taxi drivers, they might not be able to break those bills. So keep that in mind. And if you happen to see maybe a department store or something like that, buy a pack of gum or pack something small so you can get some smaller bills and some change back. Um, I already kind of talked about it. I was saying the taxi driver. That was one of my other ones. Um, money belt for keeping important documents, for keeping your money secure. Uh, we also did that. You know, we did the put them in the bottom of your shoe, put even just a little bit down there, put a little bit in my wallet. We had them in multiple areas for the for if, if the situation arose and somebody said, hey, I want your money. I could pull out what was in my pocket. I always had something small in my pocket or in a little wallet. And I'd be like, here you go. And they would generally say that think that was all we had. So they wouldn't continue asking for more because we weren't going to get in an argument, you know. Um, so but yet we had smaller bills place throughout our bodies and our belongings, um, bottom of our shoe and our money belt and a backpack and a pocket, one right pocket, one left pocket. You can do those things, you know, a jacket pocket. So your money is secure. And then if somebody does come up to you and rob you, which hopefully that won't happen or tries to pickpocket you, they're only going to get one thing. They're not going to probably find all of them. So 
that's just something to keep in mind just to being safe. Um, another thing we do is we actually remove all of our jewelry, like my wedding rings. Um, this was my mom's wedding ring, so it means a lot to me. This was my wedding ring. Um, even my like earrings, even though they're small diamonds, I remove all of those things. And I wear, we bought the rubber um, silicone rings for this trip. But in the past, we just had plain silver bands that we wore. Again, if somebody's going to come up and rob us, I don't want to get in an argument and a fight over you know, my jewelry. I want to be able to here, take it all because I left my good stuff at home. You know what I mean? So just keep in mind some of those things to keep yourself safe. Um, don't make yourself look like a target by wearing all kinds of bling. Keep it simple. You know what I mean? Just, you got to think ahead and think safety reasons and how to stay safe. So uh, another thing is eating local food. So when you are Going to someplace, sometimes, like, I did this once. I ordered fajitas in Canada. Worst thing ever. Um, they, my husband ordered lasagna because he was like, you can't really mess up on lasagna, you know. It's pretty good, pretty easy to make. Um, but think about what is customary in those areas. Like, they don't know how to make fajitas. Like, they don't eat fajitas in Canada. What was I thinking? It was horrible. It was disgusting, and I couldn't eat it. Think about what the local food is and what they specialize in and try to stick with foods like that when you're ordering um, because that's going to be what they know how, what they know how to cook it. So they're going to know how to cook it properly. Whereas if they're trying to make an American dish that they're not used to making because, you know, they put it on the menu to try to maybe please some people, but it's not going to be their specialty, they might not make it the right way and then you might end up getting sick. So try to think about what is local, like their specialties are and order along those lines. Obviously, then there's some places you may not like what their specialty is, but you can probably find something on there that you would like. And that just helps so that you're not going to end up getting sick. Um, you also want to research again, like we were told, don't do, you know, um, salads because salads, you know, come from the produce and they don't always fertilize in the most best way and all that stuff. So we avoided salads in Mexico. They always say don't drink the water. So you need to kind of know what some of the things to be aware of are. And again, that comes with researching ahead of time what, you know, is customary, what is normal. I know coming from Tokyo, going to Tokyo, they said that the drinking water is amazing. You don't have to worry about it. They have drinking fountains, they have water refills, and they have vending machines everywhere. So, you know, it's not an issue. Um, but just research and do what you need to do to find out what's customary there, what's okay there, what, if there's any caution, that you, things you need to be cautious of and stuff like that. Um, the next one is being realistic and knowing your limits. Um, there's times where we would, like we went canoeing and kayaking down the rivers in France and it was amazing. They had other um, like splunking expeditions and stuff. I knew for myself that was not something I was physically going to be able to do or want to do. So you keep in mind and be realistic about your expectations. If you see, you know, beautiful cathedral and the only way to get up is by hiking upstairs. If you have issues with your knees and stuff like that, you might not want to do those things because then you won't be able to walk tomorrow. So keep in mind some of your physical limitations and do things within those limitations um, and just, you know, like you don't want to hurt yourself. So just keep that in mind. The next one is um, kind of like hyping up your trip and your destination. So one of the things that I've tried to do is I did watch a few of the videos on the point of view um, for some of the rides at Tokyo because my son is a very afraid of roller coasters. But I'm trying not to, and I did watch a few other videos, but I'm trying not to watch a bunch of videos, like, because it's going to be all decorated for Halloween and they have all these specialty things and stuff. I'm trying not to go crazy watching those things because I want it to be a surprise. I want it to be, I don't want to have my expectations be, like, expecting all of this and then them not be met because then I'll be disappointed. So the one good thing is, even though Tokyo Disney has been on our list, um, I've never really done a lot of research on it, so it really is going to be a new thing for us, and it's going to be exciting, I, I think. so. Um, but keep that in mind when you're doing these things. We had some friends that we took with us to, to France, um, and we flew into Paris, but we were like, we're going to get on the train, we're going to you know, go to Bordeaux, we're going to rent a car, we're going to go to the Lazy Valley, we're going to go camping. It's amazing. It's so beautiful there. It's like incredible. And so we went there, and... We spent like five days there, and then we were going to spend a couple days in Paris, and then we were going to go to Normandy. Well, while we were camping, 
she just kept saying, I want to go to Paris. 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 And I'm like, trust me, this is beautiful. Like, just enjoy this. This is like the best part of France. Like just the countrysides and meeting the people and being immersed in the culture. There's no other tourists around here. It's like you are embedded in there. Like, you know, there was no other Americans. Like we didn't run into any other Americans on our trips. Like when we went camping there, um, because no one else did that. Nobody else took the time to drive in off the beaten path and do those things. Well, we ended up getting to Paris and she was like, yeah, camping was way more awesome. Like totally should have listened to you, you know? And I was like, yeah, she had in her mind this whole vision, this whole idea of Paris. And then when we got there, it what it didn't live up to the expectations. And she realized that what we were doing was actually, you know, more incredible. So just kind of keep those things in mind. Um, just being able to be realistic about what's going on and, you know, what your expectations are and your reality. So sometimes a good idea to be a little bit surprised. Like I said, you want to research, but you don't want to necessarily know, like watch videos and see it and then expect to be that way. I mean, when we went to the Eiffel Tower, I was like, that's it. I, like, I thought it was going to be this like huge towering thing. We're like, that's it. So, you know, some of those things, they aren't as big and as amazing as you think when you get there. Just keep them in mind. Um, the next thing, the last thing is meeting the locals. And that is what we love to do. Like I said, when we went camping um, in France, that was probably my favorite experience of all was because we were literally immersed in the country. Like we were in the country. We didn't meet anybody else who spoke. We did meet some people that spoke English because they were from like England or other places, but we were the only American tourists out there. And the people treated us, even though they spoke no English and it was way harder to communicate when we needed to they were so kind and appreciative of the fact that we were there it was amazing and they went out of their way and they were so friendly and so amazing I could tell you story upon story of these amazing people that just were incredible and so welcoming and so caring like unbelievable and that was because we went off the beaten path and we went to meet the locals and to hang out with the locals and to see the locals um it's just, it's so incredible. Even with a language barrier, we still could have fun, you know? So just keep that, you know, take that into, put in your mind, I don't know, lock it in there. Take time to meet the locals. Um, I We've never done like a tour where we paid for a tour to go places because I don't want to be surrounded by other people on tour. I want to be surrounded by the locals. So we generally won't do a tour because we don't want to um, stand out and be surrounded by, and that's not all tours. Like some tour uh, companies are amazing and they give you that opportunity. But so often um, you're just, you're end up just talking with other people visiting from the United States. And I'm just like, I, I want to go meet the people that live here. So, all right, guys, that was a long video, but those are some of my travel tips from back when we used to travel um, to now just kind of remembering some of these things and how to make traveling hopefully a little bit easier for you. So thanks for watching. Have a beautiful, blessed day. Bye. Jesus, wake me from my sleep. Father, come breathe breath in me. I'm in the shadow.